JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for February the 3rd. I am Harald Lambos Pissuros, Head of Research here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar continued trading lower against most of the other major currencies on Wednesday and during the Asian session uh, Thursday. It gained ground only against uh, AUD and NZD while it was found virtually unchanged against CAT. The greenback lost the most ground versus GBP and the euro, the central banks of which decide on monetary policy today. Now, the weakening of the US dollar suggests that the market participants may have continued to, to buy stocks, but the relative strength of uh, the yen and the franc and the weakening of the risking dozy and kiwi uh, point otherwise. Therefore, in order to clear things up, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world. Now, here uh, we see that the most major uh, European and US indices traded in, uh, in the green with a couple uh, uh, with only a couple uh, finishing uh, virtually, uh, virtually unchanged. However, today in Asia, Nikkei slid 1.06%, uh, uh, while on its first trading session uh, for the week, KOSPI jumped 1.67%, uh, perhaps to catch up with the recovery seen in other indices uh, the last uh, few days. Now, today, as we already noted, we have two major central banks deciding on monetary policy, and those are the Bank of England and the ECB. First, we have the Bank of England, which at its latest gathering decided to push the hike button for the first time since the outbreak of the coronavirus, lifting interest rates to 0.25% from 0.10% and adding that more modest tightening is underway. Recent UK data have been relatively supportive with the unemployment rate declining further in November, the CPI is accelerating more than anticipated in December, and the preliminary PMI is revealing further economic expansion during uh, the month of January, despite a slower pace than in December. Thus, we do see the case for a quarter point increase at this uh, gathering, and actually this is not only our view, but the market consensus as well. According to the UK overnight index swaps forward yield curve, investors are fully pricing in such an action while they see the case for nearly four more hikes by the end of the year. The, therefore, a 25 basis points hike by itself is unlikely to prove a major market mover. Market uh, tension is likely to fall to clues and hints on how fast policymakers are planning to proceed with upcoming liftoffs. What's more? Remember that uh, the 0.5% is the level the bank placed as a threshold for beginning to shrink its balance sheet. Therefore, we will look for references on that front as well, as well as on the updated economic projections. Let's not forget that um, uh, this will be a super uh, Thursday for uh, the Bank of England. Anything suggesting uh, an aggressive uh, rate path uh, by this bank and the balance sheet reduction as early as uh, this week could support the British pound, which due to monetary policy divergences could uh, keep outperforming currencies like the Aussie and the Euro. Um, now, soon after the Bank of England, we have the ECB deciding on monetary policy, but <coughs> excuse me, no action is expected from this bank. 
Despite market participants pricing in a small rate increase by the end of this year, the governing council has been holding the view that something like that is unlikely. ECB President Christine Langart expressed uh, that view several times in the past, while a couple of weeks ago she said that inflation in the Eurozone will decrease gradually over the course of the year and that the ECB did not uh, need to act as uh, boldly as, um, as the Fed due to a different uh, economic situation. That said, with both the Eurozone's inflation rates coming in higher than expected, it would be interesting to see whether Lagarde and her colleagues will repeat the view that interest rates are unlikely to be lifted this year. Now, due to the slowdown in economic activity for the fourth quarter, we believe that there is a decent chance for such an outcome, something uh, that, uh, could, that could come as a disappointment to those expecting a small, a small lift-off, and uh, thus the euro may come under uh, renewed um, selling interest. Now, as for the rest of today's events, we have the final market services and composite PMIs for January from the Eurozone, the UK and the US, as well as the ISM non-manufacturing index for the month. As it is usually the case, the final market prints are expected to confirm their initial forecasts, while the ISM index is anticipated to have declined somewhat to 59.3 from 62.3. As every Thursday, we also get the U.S. initial jobless claims for uh, the prior week. So, that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So, goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.